I just realized I've been a photographer for almost uh, 40 years, which was a bit of a shock. Well, I came by accident. I was actually a, a painter. And before that, I was an actor because I grew up in a theater family. And um, so I was surrounded by the arts. And one of my first books was The Family of Man. So some ideas about photography had already entered into my head. And uh, because my father was involved in the Harlem Renaissance, I was aware of people like uh, Roy de Carava, Gordon Parks, and, uh, you know, people like that. And um, I met Eugene Smith because uh, my girlfriend at the time was his assistant. There's lots of stories about Gene, and, you know, but for some reason he, he liked to tell stories. And so we would go for long walks and he would talk to me and he, more and more he told me that he thought maybe I should, you know, try to maybe make some pictures. I mean, his attitude about cameras were, they were like tools. And one of Gene's expression was a, that a camera is like a hammer. And uh, the funny part is he went and proved it to me one day. He saw the camera around my neck and uh, with the leather covering, and he said, uh, what is that? And I said, well, my parents gave me a camera. And he said, uh, give that to me. And I you know, handed it to him. I thought he was just going to look at it and tell me what a great camera it was. And he took the leather, had one of those big receptacles, and he tossed the leather casing in into the garbage, almost like a basketball player, went right in. And then he asked one of his assistants, you know, bring me a piece of wood and a nail. And they went scrummaging around and they came back with a nail. In the old days, the Minolta's, they used to have these 55 millimeter lenses where you could get a good grip on it. He took the nail and he took the wood and he hammered the nail into the wood with my Minolta SRT 101. And I sat there horrified. I can tell you, they made very good cameras then because he didn't put too much of a dent in it. And he threw it back at me and I was like, didn't know whether to be pissed off at him and I was trying to understand what was going on in his mind and he said, it's a hammer, it's not a necklace, it's a tool, respect it. And, and from that, every time, I, even if I have a Leica or a really expensive a piece of equipment, if it means taking the shot, if I have to go out into the rain or any, to, any situations, because I've been in swamps, been in the desert, I have to always remind myself that it's a, a tool. I don't, I don't like just, you know, twirl it around and smack it up against walls, but I do respect the fact that it's to be used. I don't keep it in boxes and, and precious and all wrapped up. So, so I got that from him, if I got anything. I also got that he said uh, in photography, as in life, you have to give something back. You can't just be a taker. You have to be a giver. And uh, you have to respect yourself and your craft, that you are, um, you're a diplomat. And so when you're out there, you're, you're, and also you have to be aware that many people came before you. So you are part of the, you know, the chain. And you have to respect. And you have to have a knowledge of what you're doing. It can't be just about photography. You have to understand music. You have to understand painting. You have to understand books. You, you really have to be open to everything. I'm a storyteller. So with pictures, I tell the, tell the stories. That I once, uh, in an interview, said that uh, sometimes we have to tell the stories for those who can no longer tell them. And we sometimes have to remind people, like Jean said, somebody came before you and you have to constantly remind them that, you know, that is your, that is your, uh, your journey. And that's always been my journey is to go forward and uh, try to keep people aware of people like Jean Smith, you know, or tell the stories of the Chechen driver that was killed by the Russians who 
was always there for me and then that was killed because of driving me. You know, you, you can't just like... One of the things that I discover as I've gotten older is that you always have to make people aware that you didn't do it all by yourself. You know, that there are some people there that helped you, you know, like my printer, for example, Nathalie Laparali of Fenetra Secours. We are a team, we're a marriage, but things are changing now more and more. We still work in film, but, you know, slowly, slowly, I'm having to accept the digital age. But I don't want to be a digital warrior either. I want to, I want to find a way to master this technology, but I want to find a way to do it my way. You know, and one of the games I play with it, as I make believe the flashcard, is actually film. And I don't turn the camera on. I mean, it's like, I want, I've set it up in a way that if I press the button, then I can see the image. But the image doesn't pop up when I'm shooting, because I honest, we have an expression in English. I, I don't know where it's come from, but we call it chimping. You shoot, and then you look, you shoot, and then you look. I was amazed, even at uh, the Cannes Film Festival, which I just shot for Le Monde, they were absolutely chimping. I couldn't believe it. I was like, <laughs> this is madness. And I can tell you, if you're in a field of uh, conflict or a battle and you do that, you'll get a bullet in the head. You have to be very aware of what's going on around you. Well, I mean, Nora is unique. Like I said, there's three top agencies in the world today. It's uh, Magnum, Noir, and Seven. <laughs> we acknowledge that Magnum is still leading, but Noir feels that we're giving Seven a run for its money. We have a lot of respect for Seven. I mean, Seven, is, Seven really was one of the first ones that, after, I mean, I guess many others, but Seven really said it's possible for a group of photographers to take and make an agency. The thing about Noor, though, is like, and I think that we were one of the first to come up with the concept of we're a foundation. We're not just an agency, we're a foundation. I know that Magnum has now done it and Seven has done it, but we really are. We're listed, we're, we're now in a possibility to accept funds, to, to, to generate funds, to give out money for projects. So that's, that's a good thing. Where we are today, in a way of a business sense, it's, um, it's very tough now. It's the future. I can't, you know, there's a great expression. If you try to hold back the arms of the clock, it'll rip your arms out. You can't stop progress. You can't stop time. You have to adapt, but you also have to find a way to make it work for you, not against you. And I've played this game with digital, like I said. I take the flash card and I treat it as if it's film. And therefore, it's starting to work for me. And because I've had the advantage of working with Nikon, and they've been, and I'm not, this is not a, some sales point, it's just reality. If you sit me down and tell me, okay, this is the reason why you should use this equipment, and this is the reason why it's going to help you, I'm not going to be so arrogant and say, well, screw you, I don't want to hear that nonsense. I'm going to listen because I don't know. I really don't. And when I'm told, listen, I'm, I see somebody and they're saying, you know, you should get the D3X because the D3X has got more megapixels. I'm like, oh, now megapixels, that means more space, that means bigger picture. But then when I'm told, no, you should get the D3S because you can shoot in lower light, and what do you do mostly is shoot in lower light. You are noted for shooting in darkness. So <laughs> there's a good argument. <laughs> and when I say, this is the mail your camera today, you go, okay, thank you. But that's because somebody, they don't like try to say to you, well, you should get it because. I mean, there's certain marks that say to you, you should buy this camera because this is the camera. I don't care if this is the camera. I want to know if the camera works. If I work with another camera, it's only because I find some kind of adaptability to that camera to make it work. You know, truthfully, at the end of the day, and I think Christian Cajol once said it, at the end of the day, what's really more important is finding a way to make an image. Whatever you use, if you use a pinhole camera, it's all about making an image. Today, for example, I shot the Cannes Film Festival, 
Well, I certainly couldn't do the Pecan Film Festival and meet their deadline with a pinhole. So you, you shot the camera with a... With a Nikon digital. I shot it with a Leica and a, did, and a Nikon. And, and I'm not ashamed to say it. And I can tell you all the reasons why I did it. The Nikon was practical in the sense of that it gave me the access to a long lens. It was practical because it was a rugged camera. And I was, I was surrounded by photographers that were bashing into me. And it was practical because when you pull that camera out, you are a photographer. You pull out a Leica, you're still seen as some kind of dilettante. You pull out, I mean, today, yeah, because nobody has that history of Leicas. But you put, listen, every time I showed up with my, my uh, M's, they would like go, wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> wow, that's a great camera. How much is that camera? <laughs> you know, the only thing they cared about was the price. And today, again, because somebody educates me, I had no idea how expensive the D3 was. I didn't enter my concept. And yet, people are not falling all over themselves. My God, you can afford that? They're going, when they see the D9 or the D8, they're going, wow, you can afford, wow, that's uh, real. You know, you're driving the Rolls Royce of photography. But, so what? I've been shooting with Leicas for almost 30 years. And uh, they work. And I've got all these lenses. What am I supposed to do? Put them in the blue bell? I'll put it this way. I teach workshops and I do lectures and everyone wants to know what you shoot with. And when people found out I was shooting with a Nikon, they were all surprised because they knew that I was a, a Leica fiend. But then when they saw the results from the Nikon, they started to say, huh. I will say this. I think you can shoot with both. I think that, the, that, that the, you can have this relationship, that you, if you look at World War II, not World War II, if you look at the Vietnam War, those gear guys are packing Nikons with long lenses, and they're also packing Leicas around their neck, and they've got the tape on them so that they knew which colors were in the cameras. You know, Larry Barrels, uh, McCullen. You know, all of them, they're all packing single lens reflex cameras and they're all packing rangefinders. The reason is because the rangefinder was perfect for low light. If it's true that Nikon can go to 50,000 AZA, that might change. But still, I think there still can be a marriage. I don't think that you have to totally reject. The other thing is you can't put a Nikon in your pocket. So I think that if everyone is willing to accept the marriage, it's not a bad marriage. <laughs> when I see a photograph that shows brains, some, some guts or some, you know, like, like something was committed to take that picture, it wasn't just click clack Kodak, and something that shows humanity. Yeah, that to me is a good photo when it shows all of those elements, but particularly humanity, because today a lot of photographers want to be artists. And I think it's very important to, to also be concerned about humanity. Because we're all, we're all part of the same thing, and we all need each other. And then because one person is going through a very bad time, doesn't mean that you can make art of them and take advantage of them. You know, you can't, we can't be merchants of misery. Voila.